Hello, it's Halloween special time. In fact, this is my very first Halloween special and not exactly sure why it's taken me this long to get around to it as I do like a bit of Halloween. Even decorated my studio in a spooky fashion for you. Though, come to think of it, it probably doesn't look that much different from how my studio normally does. I think this guy here is a, a permanent fixture around here. So it didn't take me too long to come up with the concept for this video. It's Halloween, therefore I'm looking at the track Halloween by Susie and the Banshees. It's an amazing song, some amazing guitar playing on this from the great John McGeerk, and it's the kind of song that I would have got around to looking at anyway, Halloween or not. If you're familiar with my videos, then you might have heard me talking about John McGeerk before. He's a definite favourite of mine. In my opinion, one of the most inventive and talented guitar players of the 1980s. And if you don't know his stuff, I do urge you to check it out. And I think the album Juju from which the song Halloween is taken would be a really good starting point. He's also a really influential player. Just recently I heard Ed O'Brien from Radiohead talking about how McGeeck was a big influence on his style. And also I think John Frusciante, the guitar player with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, he's cited McGeeck as an influence on his style. So let's take a look at the song. We've got three or four great riffs and then we've got some variations on those riffs. Actually took me quite some time to figure out exactly what was going on because he's doing some quite unusual things here. Also took me some further time to actually practice the song and to get it to the kind of level where I was happy to turn on a camera and to, to film myself and put it up on YouTube because it's actually quite a difficult song to play properly I think. But let's take a look. Let's start with this intro riff then. <laughs> Fabulous sounding riff this one I think. For me this is all based around a kind of D7 shape. Now I'm sure most of you know this open position D7 chord already. All we're doing for this riff is we're moving that shape 12 frets higher. So we've got the notes A, C and F sharp on, on the G, B and high E strings. And I'm also playing some open D string. So what we're doing is we're playing the open D string twice and then we're playing this little three note shape. Now, I think it sounds best if you just squeeze down that three note shape when you want to hear the chord and then release pressure when you're playing the open D string. The rhythm here is one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. Then we're just moving that same shape two frets higher. So we've got this kind of sound. I'm playing at the 16th fret, 15 and 16. Uh, not exactly sure, sure what that chord is. I think it's some kind of diminished chord. It's got that nice spooky diminished sound. We're picking that in exactly the same way. So open D and then hitting that three note shape. Doing that a couple of times, then we're moving back down to the original shape. So that's the, the intro riff. And that whole thing is repeated twice. I'm playing all of that with down strokes. I think it makes sense just to dig in with down strokes on this particular riff. Moving on to this verse riff then. There's no doubt about it that this riff is pretty hard to play. It's based on this quite ridiculous stretch. Uh, when I was trying to figure this out off of the record, I, I did kind of wonder whether he was actually playing it in this way, but it, it seems to be the only possible way to, to play those notes and to get it to sound right. And sure enough, it was confirmed when I found a little bit of video footage where you can see him doing this, this stretch here. Um, so uh, have a go at doing it this way. If, if you find this, stretch absolutely ridiculous then I am going to show you a little bit of a cheat where you can play the same notes in a bit more of a playable fashion and it will still sound okay but as it's played on the recording the riff goes like this we've got we're playing the fourth fret on the D string and then we've got an open G string and then we're playing the seventh fret on the B and here comes the stretch. We're going to have to then move the index finger over to the third fret on the high E string. And then we're going to play the high E, then the B, then the G strings. So 
So you can see that I'm moving my first finger across in the middle of that riff. At first I thought that maybe he was holding down all of those notes at the same time. <laughs> Um, which would be absolutely ridiculous but from video footage you can see that he's actually moving his index finger back and forth between the D string and the high E string which makes it a little bit easier but it's still bloody difficult to play. So I'll just give you try and get my picking hand in shot you can see that I'm playing the in the D, G, B, high E, and then I'm going back again. I'm playing this with a down, 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 up, up, up kind of picking technique. And the key to getting this sounding good is just to get those strings ringing together where possible. So um, you're gonna need to fret these notes really cleanly with your fretting hand. So staying on the tips of the fingers so that that open G string can ring. And on this bit in particular, you want all three of those notes ringing together. So that's the verse riff as it's played on the record. Now, if you have a go at that and you just think, McGeeock, you're having a laugh. Um, there's no way I can do that stretch. Then I've come up with a little bit of a cheat that you can do. And I think one way of doing it would be to, to play it up here. And you can hear that it's exactly the same notes. The tone is a little bit different because I'm playing it higher up the neck, but it still works and it still sounds good. So. Um, here I'm just playing you know, F sharp and a G, the ninth and tenth frets on the A string. Then I'm skipping over to this F sharp here, it's the eleventh fret on the G, and then I'm catching this G note here at the eighth fret on the B string. Then I'm skipping back to the A string. I think that's an acceptable cheat. I still think it sounds pretty good. So for most of the verse, McGeeock is just playing this riff. Uh, the interesting thing here, and also in other Susie and the Banshees songs like uh, Spellbound, which I've done a lesson on, it's the bass that is really defining what these chords mean. So McGeeock is just playing the same thing. Underneath that, the bass is playing a D note and then a C note. So it's kind of changing what those notes in, in the guitar chord actually means. So the second half of the verse, there's just a slight variation on this main riff, on the, the trick or treat bit of the song. And that just goes like this. So we're holding down that first shape. We've got the F sharp, open G, and then the octave F sharp. And then this time we've got an open high E string. Playing that twice, then we're going back to the original riff. And then all of that repeats. And that's the verse. Okay, let's talk about this bit, which I'm going to call the bridge. And again, it's a lovely riff, this one, and this is based on a little riff played up in the 12th position. We've got an, a droning open D string, and then there's a little melody played on the G string. And I'm just playing at the 12th, 14th and 15th fret. So the, the notes I'm playing here are G, A, B flat, A, G, A, B flat, A. And if you add in the droning open D string, and then we're going to play this shape here and this is the same shape that we had in the introduction of the song but this time it's played a bit lower down the neck so I'm playing the 10th fret the 9th fret and the 10th fret on the G B and high E again with that open D string 
and again it gives you kind of a diminished sound I think and we're just arpeggiating that shape like this. So in terms of string numbers it's uh, string 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. And if I put that together with the, the droning riff. So those are the main riffs to the song and there are just a few variations that I think it might be worth talking about. Now the intro riff is repeated three times during the course of the song. The second time it's played it's played exactly as it's played at the start of the song but the third time there's this slight variation you can hear. Um... <laughs> All based around this same little three note shape. The first time through it's exactly the same as before. Then we've got this quite quick 16th note, it's almost like a tremolo picking thing going on. It's still based off of the same shape but we're, we're moving it down by one fret. So we've got these three notes and we're playing with a quick down up 16th note rhythm. Um, just two beats of that, one E and a, two E and a, moving it one fret higher and then one fret higher again and then down one fret. And then we're back to the original riff. If I put all that together one more time. I think at the end there it's just strumming eight notes on this D7 shape. Now towards the end of the song we've got another nice drony riff. And this is quite simple to play, we've just got the 7th fret on the G string and the 5th fret on the G string and again we've got this open drony D string. So we're, we're sliding into the 7th fret. Sliding in four times I think, then we're doing the same thing but sliding into the fifth fret. And then that takes us into the very end of the song, we're back to the bridge riff. And then we're back to the intro riff just to end the song. Just playing that four times. So one more riff just as a little bonus really and I didn't really notice this riff until I started preparing this lesson but there's a really nice overdub that you can hear in the third verse and it goes something like this. And the interesting thing is it sets up a kind of polyrhythmic effect because this riff is really in 3-4 time and it's played against the main riff in 4-4 four, four time and it creates a really cool effect. So the notes that I think McGeeck is playing are these, we've got so six notes, we've got an open D hammering onto the seventh fret and then fifth fret on the G and then we've got another open D this time hammering onto the fifth fret and then the seventh fret on the G. So it's one and two and three and one and two and three and and that's 
that's just repeated throughout the second half of the third verse. Now what I thought I'd do just to demonstrate how this sounds is I've got the main riff on a looper pedal here. If I set that going then I can play this riff over the top and you can hear that polyrhythmic effect happening. So that's the main riff. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If I add in the second riff it sounds like this. Super cool sounding I think. Let's talk about gear then and how you might go about getting some of these McGeeock sounds. Now I don't know exactly what McGeeock would have used when he was recording this song but I do know some of the gear that he was known for using and famously he used a really nice Yamaha SG1000 guitar. I think amp wise he tended to use a Roland Jazz Chorus or sometimes a Marshall and then for effects he seemed to go for MXR effects, the, the, the flanger and the chorus in the, the big enclosures. I don't know exactly the, the model names for those but you can find that information online. Now I don't have any of that stuff but I'm trying to get as close as I can with the gear that I've got. So the guitar I'm using is my Jazzmaster. It's an American vintage 65 Jazzmaster. I think I'm using the bridge pickup on that. And we need two different sounds for this song I think. There's the clean sound which is used in that stretchy riff and for that I'm using a couple of pedals. I'm using my Rocket Archer Overdrive pedal not really to get any extra gain but just to fatten up the sound a little bit so the gain is is nearly all the way off on that pedal and then from there I'm going into a chorus pedal. I think chorus is essential for this song. I'm using my 80s Boss CE2 pedal. That's the clean sound and then for the heavy stuff I'm just stomping on a distortion pedal and today I'm using my Rat distortion pedal. Amp wise it's the Vox AC30. It's a 90s AC30 reissue with the blue speakers in it. So there we have it. Have fun learning to play this song. Do feel free to cheat on that stretchy main riff as it is a real bastard to play and certainly don't injure yourself doing that. As usual there's going to be a detailed tab up on my Patreon page. There's also going to be a little backing track that I've put together so you'll be able to download that and play along should you want to. Suggestions for next year's Halloween special are very welcome. I can already think of one or two good ideas for that myself but do let me know and then we can make the Halloween special a regular thing. Thank you for watching. I'll be back next week with something non-Halloweeny. Uh, I'll see you then. Bye bye.